Okay, this is freaking awesome. <laughs> uh, I don't know why. I think it appealed to the child in me. I made a um, replication of a typical soda beer pop can. And then I made a cap that has a secret combination to lock it in place. So it's like a miniature little secret hiding place. I can't call it a safe because obviously you can just carry it away. It's not very safe. But for kids or for people with a kid at heart, uh, it's pretty fun. The idea is it's a hide in plain sight and a secret combination to unlock it and give you access to it. And the way it works is there's a small, um, what, what would be actually the mouth opening on the can, that is actually a button. So you press, depress that and then rotate the tab and that's now unlocked it and now you can just unscrew it and open it up. Inside, there's some uh, locking points around the inside of the top of the can. And on the lid, uh, this is now in the withdrawn position, so I'll release it back to its, that's the, let's call it the lock position or the neutral position. There's two little locking tabs that stick out from each side, and those are what are engaging with the locking points inside the can. And if I show that from the back side, let's see if I can do this without the camera coming to me. Uh, when I press in the button and rotate this, you can see the cam plate. Uh, sorry, let's try and keep it focused. The cam plate shift and that rotation there is pulling in the little teeth. So I'll do it again in focus. You can see that tooth on top, the locking tab, withdraw and come back out. Super simple, uh, it ratchets into place and you can hear it ratcheting and once it's on, it's on, it's all pretty solid actually. I had a, a situation where a friend knocked the tab out and it was like, well, that's it, it's permanently locked. But I printed a key, uh, made a key so you can actually, if that happens to you, I improved the design slightly, but if that happens, there's a key to open it. Otherwise, just press in rotate this and turn the top counterclockwise like normal and you're in i have to put a little bit of knurling on the outside of the what would have been the aluminum top of the can which makes it look a little less natural but without that it was just too slippery to to open so the knurling helps you get a grip on it and turn it uh, when you want to unlock it it does stand out a little from other um, cans but if you print a whole bunch of them it starts to look normal, so it's kind of fun. That's it, super simple, kind of fun, not meant to be anything more than just a fun gadget. Um, I've printed it 100% in PTG. There's no hardware or fasteners required, no glue. Let's get to assembly and we can talk about the, the details of it. So these are all the parts that print, that make up the, the product. Obviously the can itself is it's pretty straightforward, should print without any difficulty. No support required on any of the parts except for this piece and it has built in support. So don't slice in any support and just break that out. Should come out pretty straight, pretty easy. I've never, haven't had any trouble with it. So you've got that out now. Now with the printed in support out, removed, Put in the push down plate. Everything's indexed on this little nub here. Put in the spacer. Then the locking tabs go in one side and then you just need to grab the other side and flex it back far enough that you can get it to drop into place. And once it does, you'll see it pop out the side. Should come out this side here. There it is there. So you get one on each side. That's what causes it to lock. Then, <clears throat> This kind of cam plate thing drops in like that. Put your finger on here, hold it together, flip it over. This part can just drop in, but you wanna make sure that you've got the tabs out when you do this and that once it goes through, that it's sitting in this position, the, the sort of closed position. And then there's a split ring. So this split ring holds it all together. Now, it's probably worth noting at this point. Okay, so it's functional now. So you can press this down, rotate that. That's withdrawn these teeth and now it would be un you could unscrew it. 
It's probably worth noting that we had a friend over and she, I gave her one of these cans closed and I said, it doesn't take any excessive force, but see if you can figure out how to open it. And she broke it before she opened it. And the way she broke it was she pulled this so hard that this split ring or snap ring popped off. And when that happens, you no longer have the ability to open it. So there's nothing to turn the locking mechanism. So I made this key. So if that ever happens, you can print the key, turn this in and, and open the device. But because of that, I also had to add this larger snap ring because if you pop this off and this plate drops down inside the locked container, you have nothing to turn to open it. There's no way to open it at that point. So this little, spr this little sprung ring here sits on the outside and holds it all together. It does create a little bit more friction, unfortunately, but, but it's still not difficult. And you can drop a bead of, um, of lubricant on there if you want to just help reduce that friction. And that's it. When this is working properly, you can't turn this piece to, to, re to withdraw the lock without pressing this first. So once that's pressed, then you turn this and that pulls in teeth. These teeth then allow you to back out the, the lid from the can. And when you close again, they pop back out and this is locked again. So it's not obviously not too hard for somebody to figure out. It's more fun than anything, but, but it is pretty fun. And I also designed a non-locking lid. So this lid actually looks more, more convincing on the top because it's printed bottom down. This is really just an alternative to the locking cap. It just screws on. There's no lock or anything. Um, but if anybody's struggling with the locking mechanism and the details there, then you can just print one of these lids and you've got a, a closable container. I printed everything in um, with the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle and a 0.2 millimeter layer height. There is a few voids, uh, one in this tab, well, both these tabs have a small um, block to them and in the top of the can. So don't print 100% infill, you'll just be wasting some filament. I'm using 40% infill and it, and it works fine really well but any anything like that is fine even down to probably 20 or 25 percent I, I i obviously just printed all the pit parts in different colors to help visualize it uh, for this video i did use a silver um, material that i had which is probably as convincing as you'll get for a top cap but it's still a little bit dark white's too white and the gray I have is, is darker than this, but if you had a light gray, that would probably be the most convincing for the, the, the aluminum of, of, the, of the can top. I believe you could use any material. You do need a little bit of spring action on these locking tabs, and PETG obviously works well, but all the materials have enough flex that I think that will be fine. I think the print orientation of all the parts will be intuitively obvious, uh, but if it's not, make sure you check out the um cura screenshot that i've put on my blog on logical planet it shows the orientation of every part i'm not sure there's any further evolution of this product but if there is it might be to make another layer of of um secret combination to make it open or maybe a key but um, I think for now, this is pretty much where this one will land. I think the idea is kind of cool and could be applied to other things too. I like the idea of a secret box that you have to press certain buttons and twist things and do it to, to allow it to be opened rather than actually having a key. It's kind of like a, a secret combination of movements to allow it to be opened. So that's probably the, the future item for me if I can ever make the time to do something else along these lines.